Often uh, women are better managers, they are more organized, uh, more disciplined. Uh, women in the parliament and in government, uh, uh, they are more responsible. And uh, this uh, directly uh, relates uh, to the quality of the laws and the political decisions. The answer is very simple. If you want the best policies, they're going to be whole of society policies and you won't be able to get whole of society policies if you don't bring in the perspectives from everyone who makes up that part of society. In the United States, women are half the population, potentially half of the labor force, so they need to exercise their voice when it comes to decisions that affect everyone, not just their families, but their communities, their states, their country as a whole. Uh, women in politics, uh, it's a good question and here let me uh, refer to the report which was released only yesterday. This is a new UNDP report uh, talking about the biases and uh, uh, towards the gender equality. Uh, they released the index of a gender social norm index which speaks that the, the big problem of now when it's come to the gender uh, equalities, it's more a power gap, not the, uh, not the other things. So 47% of surveyed people still think that the men are better in politics and 41% think that men are better in leading businesses. So, I mean, we need more women. You can see everywhere uh, not only here in North Macedonia, is that women very often are not visible. They don't have a voice in the public sphere. So th that is why I think, I mean, they have a lot to tell. They have a lot of and different experience to bring in, in the political dialogue. And that is why it is so important to have this diversity of experiences behind. So that is why I think it's so important to encourage uh, also women to, to be politically active and to bring their voice in, because they have a lot to tell. So one example is in peace process negotiations, they're 50% more likely to succeed if women are involved, and they're 35% more likely to succeed for more than 15 years. So that's just one reason for involving women. The other reason is that we're more than 50% of the population and we need to be part of the policy making. The UN Secretary General was talking about this this week. If you don't have women's data taken into account, then you make the wrong policy decisions. Uh, a good example is traffic. Okay, in most places, we clear the snow off the roads first. But actually, women taking children to school, going to the shops, actually use the pavements. So when you're making these policies, you need to know what actually all members of society are doing to make policy that actually impacts positively for everybody. Uh, women are uh, more sensitive to uh, social uh, problems. Uh, they are more concerned about social development, uh, uh, social economic development of the country. And uh, women are more sensitive to humanitarian problems and uh, women are less likely to uh, support the use of the military force. I think it's important for women to become more engaged uh, in many ways in their communities and in the political environment and that they can do in many different ways that uh, add the value of the fact that they're 50% of the population. Women are important members of their families, of their communities, and women should definitely think of how they can best contribute, uh, and not necessarily just in politics. They can contribute to their community through civil society organizations, through NGOs, through participation in, in government and in uh, politics is another way. But I think uh, the fact that, that, that we're such an important part of the community means that we have a unique view and unique value added in policy decisions in our countries and in our communities. 
first thing is to make sure that they see role models, that they see paths that they can follow. A second is to make sure that they have the confidence and the support uh, to pursue their passions. And finally, to make sure that they have their skills. One of the things I'm most proud of is that our embassy here in Skopje has been able to partner with institutions here to provide more opportunities to women. We have uh, a number of programs focused on university and high school students through our five American corners in country, as well as with uh, youth centers in Chayer and Gostivar, um, and through special grants that we provide to uh, Roma women, for example, and also uh, women and girls in remote and rural communities who don't have access to the same opportunities. We provide scholarships and educational opportunities, and even professional exchanges that help young women develop the skills that they are going to need to be not only uh, encouraged to participate in politics, to be extremely effective when they do so. We do a lot already. I think we need to show women that it's possible. Um, so we have small examples, some of the things that we've been doing here, working with the Ministry of Defence on the National Action Plan on gender, working uh, to get rid of menstrual poverty so that all girls get an education. But you also need systematic change, so that's, for example, the work that's already been done here to have quotas in Parliament. That's a very positive change. Um, I think you need to tackle other issues. One I'm very passionate about is actually tackling hate speech. Women in uh, public life are one of the most vulnerable groups. And we need to work together to show solidarity against this and have zero tolerance for hate speech so that more women feel that politics is something that they can do and somewhere that they can make change. Well, there is, there is a lot you can do to support or to help women to be politically active. Um, I can tell you the example or some examples from our program, our cooperation program, Switzerland. We've been supporting and continue supporting the parliament, meaning that we're also working with female MPs, so we encourage them also to be more visible, to bring in their ideas and to strengthen them within this uh, parliamentary assembly. Uh, this is one uh, important uh, and very powerful, I think, instrument we do have uh, uh, Switzerland. And then there is another uh, um, element or another aspect where we also try to support the women's issue is the, 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 the um, gender-based um, uh, budgeting and gender-based policies uh, in, in the whole country. We start usually from the level of the municipalities where you try, we really try to, to, to um, uh, put the women's issues on, on, the, on the agenda of the municipal uh, uh, policy and then also on the budget, meaning that this also needs to have financial implications because otherwise this still uh, is, is, is a word, an empty word that doesn't really have an implication. But once it gets also financially uh, um, interesting and financially that it means something, so this is another project we are supporting together with the UN uh, to really bring this topic up and to, to give the, the women's uh, issues an, uh, an importance. Uh, when a man is offered a higher uh, managing uh, position, he doesn't think, uh, okay, uh, who will bring my kids uh, to school? But a woman does and uh, mostly family responsibilities are lay on a uh, woman's shoulders. I uh, was able to return to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, soon after my uh, kid was born, but only because of my parents, uh, who were with my uh, baby when I uh, was at work, and uh, they gave me possibility to realize myself. And now, I am very, very grateful to my husband uh, who gives me uh, such a tremendous uh, support now. So, um, there should be uh, social possibilities, opportunities and uh, understanding and help uh, uh, from the family. So throughout my career uh, in the UN, we have worked in supporting women as political party candidates. 
What I find interesting about my experience in doing these types of trainings is you realize that uh, women in different communities often don't know what it means to become uh, a candidate or become a representative. And by that I mean in rural communities the thought of becoming a, a nationally elected representative means a lot of personal sacrifice for, for women and men in terms of uh, sacrifices and commitment on behalf of your family and your community if you are politically um, successful and become an elected authority you actually have to move and that has all sorts of implications on the family so one of the things that we had promoted in the different programs is not everyone needs to become a nationally elected uh, authority to be politically engaged. You can be politically engaged in your community and throughout the, the years I've found that getting women to work more closely together uh, from different communities, it really helps them understand what different types of roles they can play, as I said, in their families, in their schools, in different community settings, and of course it also means in Parliament and in other elected, um, elected community areas. It should start from the changing uh, norms in the society. I mean, the same index saying that now it's uh, more about uh, just changing the um, social norms and the biases. Uh, nowadays, this is the, the, the main thing. And that should be starting from the family, the way how we raise our kids, uh, the way how they are treated in the school, the way how they uh, um, achievements are acknowledged by the uh, teachers and by the professors. So, you know, these are the all the components making uh, women and the girls confident and uh, with the assurance that they can do things, they can bring a change and dream high and pursue their dreams. So I think, I mean, the all, at all levels, uh, there, there are things to be changed. I would be uh, more courageous, not be so patient as I was with many things and uh, not being afraid of failure because I mean failure can also be an, a chance. Failure can give you a, a, a chance to learn new things and to bring you forward. Be bolder, more confident, I uh, believe uh, that uh, dreams come true, joy and uh, cherish uh, uh, your loved ones and uh, value every minute of your life. It may sound a little bit not very modest, but if I would have that uh, opportunity to give an advice to, to myself, younger myself, Probably I will not give an advice, I will thank myself. Because after many years looking on my life now, I will st I'm a really happy person. I have a good career, I have a good family, I have excellent, I mean, kids. Balance in the life is the most important thing. And younger myself was wise enough to do keep those balances for, for my life. I think in terms of what advice I would give to younger people or to myself, a younger version of myself, I would say that it's important to take chances and to uh, really explore different avenues when you're young. Um, I feel that a lot of times young people, perhaps they start a certain profession or a certain career in university and they don't know where that's going to lead. Uh, and therefore it's okay to make different choices and make different decisions. The first few years of your career is really a time for you to discover who you are and what you want to do. So perhaps I, I'm, I think it was a fortunate thing that I changed my job several times when I was young because it allowed me to explore different things and to learn what did I want to do and what didn't I want to do with the rest of my career. I would say be brave, uh, have faith in your skills and your knowledge. 
Uh, one of the things that uh, I'm most proud of is that our scholarships, our educational exchanges, the ones that we offer, they're all merit-based. They're based on qualifications, and the majority of them go to women, which proves that they have the knowledge um, in order to succeed. What they need is the opportunity. So I would say be brave, be confident in yourself that you can take advantage of opportunities. And secondly, seek those opportunities. Don't be afraid to look out, to broaden your network. Um, to understand that there's not just one path available for you. Uh, I found my path through my father and his as a diplomat, but there shouldn't be one path for women. They should be open and available uh, to pursue any path that attracts their passion and that fits their skill sets, and I hope they have those opportunities. Um, I think I'd tell her that it's hard, but it's worth it. Sometimes people are patronizing, sometimes they're misogynistic, but if you speak up, you can change things. And also you can encourage others to change things and to speak up and therefore it's worth it. So go and do it.